Hey everybody, welcome back to Sailing Miss Lone Star, episode four, season five of Buying a Boat for a Dollar. This episode is going to be very educational. I'm not in it a whole lot other than holding the camera. I hired a rigger named Mike Zapala who was so knowledgeable about rigging. I wanted to make sure that the stick was stuck where it was supposed to be. So, so in the upcoming episode, you guys are gonna see Mike go through all the parts of the rigging of the boat, explaining to me each and every piece. And there's a lot of you that have never done this before that are looking to do it, and there's a lot of salty sailors out there, and I'm gonna check your knowledge. So so come along with me and let's learn how to rig a boat. The rigger's here to save the day and he took a look at the boat and told me a few things that I didn't know. So um, he's going to take the standing rigging off the boat, take it with him, measure it, and then um, give me a quote. So I'm really excited about that um, because once the mast is up then I can start sailing, which is one more day closer to my death. <laughs> So if the mast comes down, what kind of boat do you have? I want you guys to try to tell me what is the longest stay on the boat. I didn't know this one. In fact, I'd never really thought about it or wondered why it mattered, but tell me if you guys can uh, figure it out. There's different types of rope rigging or Dyneema. How do they get it to become so strong? I want you guys to tell me what the correct way is to bend a cotter pin. I didn't know this and I thought they looked an awfully lot like bobby pins. Can you use a bobby pin instead of a cotter pin in a pinch? If, it's, if sailing is second nature, putting a boat together and taking a boat apart is second nature, then when things go wrong, you know, you basically, I don't know, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like when you're you know how to run that thing, right? So when something's wrong with that thing, it's kind of instinctive, right? I guess so. Well, you get it done, you fix it, you're dealing with it, you're yeah. not calling, uh, you're not calling, you know, Sony True. camera repair man, and it's obviously also not a life or death situation. But really losing the mast isn't either. Well, then it's just you a power boat. You want to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's a no core type of line, and that's mm -hmm. the same thing that ducks is. It's a, pairs of strands that are together. Well, there's different types of Dyneema, uh, basically categorized by their um, by their brake strength and also their elasticity properties. Dynex ducks, they take Dyneema and they heat it and stretch it at the same time. And that's how it gets, if you've ever felt it, it's really brittle, it's really hard um, because it's been heated um, just almost to its melting point. And so that stretches it as far as it can stretch. Um, that's the properties of heat treated, pre-stretched, and what the ducks is. So when you bend a cotter pin, you, you want to think about A, the cotter pin doesn't want to come out, but you also want to think B, the cotter pin does want to come out. We want to take the cotter pin out. We don't want to have to fight the cotter pin. And so right now, to take this out, you're going to mangle something. I stick the cutters underneath of it and I'm actually just cutting it off because they're so brittle and we'll put new pins in for you. But if you were to, if, if we were to spread a cotter pin and you look at one and I'll show you one when we go back to the truck here out of the uh, parts box. One leg of a cotter pin is longer than the other. I'm just going to use bobby pins. No, you're not going to use bobby <laughs> pins. The cotter pin, as you can see, has one leg that's longer than the other leg. And that's the leg that's designed to be grabbed and pulled. Basically, what we do is just grab that piece of pin and spread it at about a 45. So that pin's not coming out. Um, if you've ever taken and played with a paper clip, how long does it take you to bend a paper clip back and forth and break it? Section two, you guys, and I'm gonna test you on this stuff. I know that I've been tested on this stuff and I think I know it. Where on the rigging is the torque tube. How long ago were the stamps on the rigging designed? I'm pretty sure it was medieval times, but I'm not sure. You'll have to check me on that. Can a rigger open a beer with a pocket chum? Also, what is a pocket chum? I don't, I don't know what a pocket chum is. I thought um, I and then another really important thing to do would be to, um, and you can see this. So what I'll do is go down to the spreader, you know, basically pretty obvious. This fork should be generally aligned. It shouldn't be hard that way or it shouldn't be hard that way. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me simulate that and you just tell me what you see. So 
that's about what you'd be looking at. So do you see that fork basically straining in one angle or the other? Yes. You do. All right, why don't you come down here and just... So that tells me, yes, that this piece is the one that's probably uh, bent in a little bit and the way that the fork's telling me that it probably does want to bend back out and look more like the other side. Okay. Okay. The uh, halyard is hoisted all the way up for some reason or another, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, and that would have been bad for you guys trying to step the mast with this halyard to swivel all the way up. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we've got an issue here. The swivel should move a lot better than it does, and I'm going to push it down towards you. And what you want to look at is probably this other side of it. And you can see there's a bushing in there that's basically mangled from the top here. Um, and we'll ta I'll take it off so we can get a better look at it. So that whole thing was just loaded and bird caged. That's the core strand of, one by, of the one by 19 cable. And these were the outer strands that started to go. So it was really only being held by these seven inside strands and so we look at the bottom piece that's called a toggle and so we're going to measure to the center of where that pinhole and that toggle is to the center of the pinhole of the eye that's at the top of the head stay furl in the middle of so you want this and, you kinda, and i'm going to be pulling at you so you can kind of be just like that okay. uh yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So we're going to say 37 feet, 9 and a half inches. 37 feet, 9 and a half inches. So that's our pin-to-pin -pin measurement of the head stay. Um, and then we're going to roll right into basically disconnecting. This is a Schaefer furler. Schaefer is a United States company that's based out of New Bedford, Massachusetts. Um, Steve McCutt is the president of Schaefer Marine. He's a really good guy and uh, they're extremely helpful people. Um, we can email back and forth readily. It's a large company, but they do great with servicing people like me and people like you. The parts of the furler consist of the foils, and the foils are grooved with a feeder, and the sail can go up either side, and there are times that you could put two sails up and have double head sails, but um, they give you two grooves. I don't really know why but they do, some people use them, some people don't. The next portion is called the torque tube. And the torque tube is attached to the drum, which the roller furling line was on. The line wraps around the drum, and then the sail can roll up, roll in and out, wrapped around the foil extrusions. The torque tube is called the torque tube because it transfers the torque from the actual mechanical apparatus of the line to the foils themselves. Section three, why are turnbuckles bronze? I think it's because they're pretty. Ooh, I love this one. What does WD-40 stand for besides amazing? Also works good to get paint out of your hair. <laughs> if you were to service your winch by yourself, how much would it cost you? If you did it properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are bearings and pawls. Which ones get grease and which ones get oil? Next thing that we do with these guys is this metal piece that's bent up. So this is the drum, this is the furling drum. This is a top and bottom flange assembly. And then this is a line guard. This metal piece is what guards the line. It keeps it from coming off the spool. It's two sections. Now I believe on this one they're captive, but let's just wait and see. Okay, so when whoever made all this stuff billions and billions and trillions of years ago, <laughs> they decided that they were going to stamp the fittings in 30 seconds because that's how the increments of cable run. So you have to be able to reduce fractions and able to figure out what it really is. But that's eight 30 seconds cable, which would be what size? 
737? <laughs> it's like 830 seconds, so it's quarter inch. Quarter inch. The executive pocket chum does not lie. <laughs> And it also provides you with conversions from decimal to fraction equivalent. Does on the it back, open but it beer? Does not reduce. What's that? Does it open a beer? Uh, no, I, I just do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that we've got quarter inch cable. Uh, one of the things that we need to do is to deduct this toggle measurement. So you and I took a pin to pin to this point. Three major companies that produce mechanical fittings. One is Staylock, one is Norseman, which uh, Norseman was a division of Natech that's out of business recently, uh, and Hain, which makes a high mod. We're dealers for Hain. Uh, this is a Staylock terminal. There's a white bushing that looks like the white bushing has been torqued. It's closer on this side than it is on that side. So what we need to do is get this piece off. Anybody can take stuff apart. Mm. Not everybody can put it back together. But don't go there. But wait, there's more. Mm. Bondo good. gonna fix this? It's good. It's okay. Is what it what's bondo? that? <laughs> no bondo. Schaefer. Schaefer. <laughs> the fittings are 316 stainless steel. The cable is 316 stainless steel. So all of this is machined, bored out out of a solid piece of stainless steel. This is bronze that has been chromed. Um, if you look inside at the threads, the bronze color of the threads, if you look on this outside here where the chrome has worn off, you see the bronze color. Uh, the reason that they use bronze is because stainless and stainless together, they don't really like to mate up together, especially when they have torque on them. Uh, so if you were to use a stainless steel body on these stainless steel threads, it would just end up galling. There are times that you'll see stainless on stainless turnbuckles, sometimes on lifelines. That's what we do, but we do put that Tef gel on there so that it, it won't gall. So I'm getting an impromptu servicing a winch lesson from Mike. <laughs> There's a little button right there in the middle that releases it right there. So the first thing an old hippie like me says is take care of the earth because the earth is taking care of us. And we're gonna use solvents. I thought you were talking about the earth in my winch. No. Nope. <laughs> so the first thing that we're gonna do is just take any loose debris, any of this bee's nest that's a paw and that's part of the spring of the paw and the paw is made, that's what you hear click inside the winch when the winch moves. And that engages in these teeth right here, which all have good stuff in it. Whatever loose dirt that we can get off of it. Soluble, WD actually stands for water displacement. Okay. Bronze. So bronze is a, uh, bronze is a lubricated type of metal. You know, there's bronze is, is, is copper and, and brass, and uh, there's inherent oils in those oil in those metals. Uh, I'm just get in there with my fingernail to just get the 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 worst thing in a winch is dirt. Yeah, dirt, and then congealing salt with the grease is also the next. So, dirt happens here on land. The congealing grease happens at sea. Next is Remove the paw. P A W L. Careful. Because that spring is spring loaded. So this is the key. You know, you see a you see a lot of people that never service their winch and they've never taken out these paws and springs and mm -hmm. then they get dirty to the fact that these springs die and then the paw breaks inside and then mm -hmm. it tears the whole winch up. Oh. The spring cost about $11, the paw cost about $18. So for like 50 bucks and me, you can <laughs> save your winch. And otherwise winches cost like a thousand bucks. And then the next big part about it is that there's a bearing that rides on this that's stuck inside of here. And that's your bearing. Those are, so that's what's called, these are what are called needle bearings essentially. A little bit bigger than a needle obviously, but each one of those little needles moves and it's kept captive by the, getting all the grease out of it, getting all the funky grease and rolling the rollers at the same time. And that WD-40 
is loosening things up for us and cleaning things off at the same time. So I thought servicing winches was like really a lot harder than It is, this. it's very hard. Can you see the angst? <laughs> and then there are also winches called self-tailing winches where the, the line stays within the winch. The more there is to the apparatus, the more difficult it can be to take a winch apart and put it back together. A mast like this and the functions of the winch on a mast like this, your halyards are all external. The mast is only 37 feet long. You're an able person, so for the most part, you don't, you don't use a winch unless you have to use a winch. Like when you're trimming a jib in, you're going to put one turn around the winch, you're going to use it by hand until it gets loaded and then you're going to put your wraps on. Same thing when you're putting the sails up on this boat. You're going to go hand over hand to pull your sails up, put a couple wraps on the winch to tension the luff properly and go from there. A lot of boats these days aren't even coming with winches because block and tackle systems have become so much more efficient that you can get plenty of purchase on a line without putting a thousand dollar winch on the side of a mast so. so see how this spring how this one is straight and that one is bent mm -hmm. slightly so the bent one the straight one wants to see oops oh, no. kind of compressing the spring that's a hard thing to video Okay, so cleaning is really the key. But the bearings get, so the bearings get grease and the pawls get oil. I'm just gonna take a little bit on my finger. I'm gonna go on the inside of the bearing. I'm just gonna do the same thing. You just take your finger and kind of press it in. And if you've ever packed trailer bearings, if you've ever tracked a, tra uh, packed a wheel bearing or anything like that, it's pretty much the same thing. I know people Let's see if I have any oil. We don't have paw oil. Uh, we don't really want to put it in there dry, so just not a bad thing is to give it a little bit of, of WD-40 lubricant, just a little bit of spray on those paws to make sure that gets down inside of there, and then we'll spray just a little bit in here. But since Aubrey is now an expert at mm -hmm. taking apart the Variant 10 winch, <laughs> that's right. no big deal for her to just grab some motor oil and throw it in there. Pretend that I'm dreaming I smell your breath Not listening But I still hear you screaming Going under One step away till you hear what I'm saying Sounds like thunder And the clouds are closing in You see I know this I'm at the fabric outlet Here you can see And it is time to say goodbye To the 1976 fabric You're gonna be missed No you're not Breaking up from a life as we know it If someone had told me That I will take off And find something greener I am doing the final little cleanup around the boat before I have to go to California and when I get back Bianca will be here so I'm pretty excited about that I'm told that you retain about 10% of what you hear, what you see. So I videoed this and I watched it 10 times, so I think I nailed it. Hope you guys did too. If you guys do watch this 10 times, make sure to like and share it. It's a big help. Sends me right up on the ratings on YouTube. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I love Bianca, mother truckers, something in Afrikaans. <laughs> Bianca, come here. This video made possible because our patrons. Thank you so much. We love you. Mwah, mwah. Say subscribe. What's our tagline? I love Bianca. Subscribe. I love Bianca. God, yada yada mix off. <laughs> Laka mint. Buy a buy a lacquer. Subscribe. Bye bye lacquer. Subscribe. Yay. Bye you guys. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. We love you so much. Thank you to our patrons. Thank you for our Vimeo watchers. We love you, we love you, we love you. If you want to see the full episode and all the details of all of the stuff that the rigger did, check out Vimeo. There's going to be tons more of Mike Zapala on Vimeo. 
hours and hours. I spent hours and hours with this man learning so much. So make sure to check that out. We love you. We'll see you next week. Bye! <laughs> One of the three major companies that produce... <laughs> <laughs> You can put that in blooper. <laughs> One more time. What? What are the three? <laughs> you can't do this. Oh, I got it. Oh, turn. I thought you said horn buckles. Turn.